Howdy folks. In this video, I'm not going to do any music. I'm going to talk about music. Uh, this content is really aimed today specifically at folks that are thinking about trying their hand in the sync music, music for television business. I want to help set some expectations. I was watching an interview with my friend Matt Vanderbo on Taxi TV. Uh, he's a peer, a fantastic composer, great guy, one of the best attitudes in the business, very successful. And he said something during this interview just a little while ago that kind of motivated me to, to bring this video together. Uh, he was talking about his musical uh, expertise or lack thereof, uh, and, and he was asked about, you know, do you have to be a good musician to be successful? And he said, musical virtuosos might actually be at a disadvantage when it comes to writing music for TV. And that really resonated with me because I consider myself somewhat of a virtuoso. I got the backgrounds to, to prove it. I got the, the awards and the recordings, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm very good at playing the saxophone. Um, but that means nothing when it comes to sync music in the business. So let me help set some expectations. There's a few folks out there, different kind of personas uh, that we can talk about. And I'm, I'm aiming this at folks thinking about getting into sync music or if you're in it right now in the early stages of your career and you're getting frustrated. Uh, so let's talk about this. Um, when I first got involved with this industry back in 2015, you know, I had been a professional musician for decades. Uh, I've got a classical music training in high school. I was an Allstate, all New England type guy. Um, I was a Disneyland All-American. I went to one of the best and most competitive music schools in the world at North Texas, um, where there were 200 plus saxophone majors alone a couple of thousand music majors in general, um, very competitive, and I was, I was very successful there. So traveled the world as a sideman, um, played with lots of cool folks, got good at what I did, lots of genres. Um, I thought, you know, listen to the music that's on TV today. Listen to how simple it is. Of course I got it. I got a music degree, a minor in music theory. I've got a good ear, not perfect pitch, but relative pitch. Um, I can quickly pick up what I hear. I thought, this is going to be a no-brainer. I'm going to crush it. My first two years in the business were basically a waste of time because I started submitting to briefs and listings for all sorts of genres because I thought, I understand what's going on there. I can analyze the beats and the rhythms and the parts and the panning and the, the theory behind it, the scales, the melodies, etc. My music generally sucked. It didn't meet their criteria of good sync music. Um, so I learned that you got to keep it simple. At the end of the day, let me borrow a phrase from Shannon over at 50 QQs, 52 Qs, uh, Dave Krupp's wonderful wife, Shannon. And uh, she said, we are artisans, not artists in this business. And that couldn't be more correct. We are servants to our clients when it comes to sync music. Sync music is not about how good of a musician you are, how great of a drummer you are, what different kinds of scales you can use, and how, how fast can you play, how many notes can you play, uh, how high can you play, how loud can you play, whatever. It has nothing to do with your musical skill. It's about meeting the client brief and their expectations. So for example, I spent many years playing weddings and company parties with a band in Dallas. And if we were at a wedding job at a fancy country club, and it's the bride and groom's first dance, and they're doing, they want Natalie Cole's Unforgettable, which was really, really popular way back then. Um, it gets to the very, very wonderful saxophone solo by Pete Chrislieb, uh, a legend in LA. Um, if we're playing that song for their moment, their first dance, and I felt motivated to think, I want to do some Dave Liebman, John Coltrane kind of really out stuff because that's hip. And I got the chops. I want to play this really cool solo. That would destroy their moment. Uh, would destroy my career with that band, probably. It would, be, it would create a lot of problems because I felt that the music needed that at that time. And that's not my job. When you're in a wedding band or a company party band, most bands, you are serving your audience. Your job is to deliver what they want to hear, especially in TV sync music. So... There's a few categories of musicians out there or folks trying to get into sync music or struggling in sync music. First, like, like I was, the performing musician, uh, the road warrior, been around the world, 20 plus different countries playing music, saxophone, keyboards, percussion, all over the place, on land, on the ocean, blah, blah, blah. I know how to play. I play really well behind vocalists. They like what I play behind them. I play any genre, whether it's rock or hip hop or cool jazz or classical, whatever the gig needs, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm a road warrior. I've done tons of gigs, hundreds if not thousands of gigs. I thought, man, there's no problem. I can do this stuff. But that's not what it's about when you're writing for sync music. You've got to write to that brief. The brief says exactly what the client wants for the most part. 
often they provide links to references, whether it's a, a Spotify playlist or links to videos on YouTube uh, to help guide you as to what they're looking for. The goal is to create a groove or a mood that goes underneath dialogue. Not the star of the show, it's supporting the stars of the show. So you could be a fantastic road warrior. You could be a fantastic side man, knowing all your genres, all your skills, all your scales, etc. Doesn't mean you're gonna be successful in the sync music world. Category two, you could be a studio engineer. You could have experience in LA or Nashville, New York, or wherever you want. You know how to run a console, you've got a fantastic ear, you can identify frequencies by ear, you know all the things, the tips, the tricks that need to be done to make something sound great. Compression, EQ, panning, modulation, flanging, whatever you want to call it. You're a fantastic studio engineer. Doesn't mean squat. Honey Badger don't care how good your mixing skills are on the back end. You've got to be able to deliver a good mix to your client, broadcast quality, TV quality, but how good of an engineer is not going to you know, make or break you in the sync music business. With, of course, duh, the expectation there is a base level of quality needed in the industry. Your music can't suck and it can't sound like crap. It's got to be decent, but being a fantastic engineer alone is not going to get you instant automatic success in the sync business. Um, another category, music major. I, that's my category again. You could be a fantastic violinist or a classical pianist or a shredding guitar player. You got your music major, you know your chords, you know your theory, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean you're going to be successful. Uh, it's all about delivering what the client wants. Another category, the experienced songwriter. Maybe you live in Nashville or LA and you've done tons of collaborations. You've got dozens or hundreds of songs to your credit, fantastic lyrics. Most often, your lyrics are not going to work for TV. They can't be specific. You can't say names, you can't say places, you can't say brands, because you don't know what scene your song is going to go under. So you can't say, I walk with Sally down the Champs-Élysées, you know, blah, 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 at midnight. No, that's not going to work because maybe the movie's not in Paris and Sally's not the main character, okay? So you've got to learn how to write generic lyrics that still portray a mood, but not a specific story. So you'd be a fantastic experienced lyricist and songwriter. Doesn't guarantee success. So I'm talking about performing musicians, music majors, engineers, songwriters. Having those skills doesn't hurt but they're not the golden ticket to be successful in the sync music. At the end of the day, we are writing for the client, not ourselves or our own creativity. We're not trying to impress anyone with our skills. We're trying to impress the client, the supervisor, the editor with our ability to deliver a clear, consistent mood that stays out of the way of dialogue. Give the client what they're asking for. So if you wanna be successful, be dependable. This is business stuff now. Know how to meet deadlines. Be flexible. Be able to respond quickly. Turn stuff around quickly if needed. Be available. Um, being dependable is really important. If they reach out to you, you need to get back to them. I've heard horror stories from, from taxi members talking to Michael Laskow uh, about people that finally get that forward. They finally get that contact. The library reaches out to them and they never call the library back. And it's, it's more common than you think. And you know we're stunned. Look, the whole reason you paid your $5 and you worked on the track and you submitted it, you got the forward, that means the music's good. And then they reach out to you. That's the whole goal of the service. And you don't call them back because you're afraid or because you, you, you don't trust the contracts or some stupid self-esteem reason. You know, the whole goal in the sync business is to get called by a library. Uh, so um, you've got to get be dependable. Always get back to them ASAP. Most of the time, uh, these editors and supervisors are running on short deadlines. A lot of times they may send briefs out and then before you have time to submit something to them, they may have picked something else from somebody else, a known entity, they found something in a different catalog, blah, blah, blah. So that's gonna happen. You're gonna get reached out to and then and then not responded to because they didn't need you. So, but be dependable. Uh, be professional, know how to communicate. Manage your inbox, strive for inbox zero, meaning no unread messages. Know how to accept feedback, know how to accept criticism. If they say, I don't like the mix on your track, it's not a personal affront to you. If they say the symbols are too hot, or can you make it slower, or vocal performance is not great, suck it up, Buttercup. You know, find a different singer. Maybe it's not a good job. Um, never send music as soon as it's done. Always try to sleep on it, deadline permitting, because you might hear something the next morning, they're like, oh crap, how did I let that slip by? So you're gonna get feedback. Some folks are great at delivering it in a nice manner. Some folks are brutal as heck. 
And you just got to deal with that. It's part of being in the business. If you're sensitive, if your feelings get hurt easily, if you can't take constructive criticism, if you're unnecessarily attached to your own lyrics, that are your own story, not the business for you. Uh, be humble. Bragging doesn't help you at all. Act like you've been there. Be humble. Be gracious. Thank you for the kind feedback, uh, the praise, or hey, thanks for the input. I appreciate where you're coming from. Let me get on that. Just be humble. Be easy to work with. In the, in the corporate world, you know, in the sales world where I worked during the day, um, there's a phrase, people buy from who they like. Yo, dog, can you stop making noise? Can you just chill out? Thank you very much. Yeah. Two dogs in the studio today. Hi, baby. Hi. Yes. I'm busy right now. Okay. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, be easy to work with. You know, people buy from who they like. Be friendly. Be sociable. Work on establishing personal relationships. Go to the Taxi Road Rally in, in L.A. every November. Uh, go to uh, the, P the, the PCA, the Production Music uh, PCA, the PMC, the Production Music Conference, usually in October every year. Be nice. Talk to folks. Don't say, hey, how you doing? What music are you looking for? Ask them how they're doing. Get to know them as a person. Eventually, you'll know about their family, their, their personalities, their sports alliances, their colleges, whatever. Get to know folks at a personal level. Be nice. Be friendly. Don't be negative. Um, and you establish those relationships, and then you'll start talking business. Before you know it, they're asking for music. So be easy to work with folks like working with folks they enjoy being around. That makes sense. That's really all I want to chat about. So I want to thank Matt Vanderbilt for inspiring this video. Thanks to Shannon over at 52 Qs for the We Are Artisans, Not Artists quote. And thank you for watching, listening, and subscribing. If you haven't, please do subscribe. I just passed a $3,000 subscribe, $3,000, 3,000 member list. I never thought I'd be there. This is just a little, you know, fun project for me to help folks out in the business. So I'm thankful for those that are subscribing. If you're not subscribing, please do. Got any comments or questions, drop them there. You know how that works in the YouTube world and the algorithm and all that fun stuff. So that being said, thanks for watching. Now go out and make some great music.